Welcome back to the studio, Sugar Snaps. Glad to have you. Happy New Year. And if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Brittany. I'm the creator of Textile Indie. Here we do basket weaving, natural dyeing, spinning, and other fiber and textile arts. And in this video, we're going to go over some gathering and cleaning of pine needles in preparation for basket weaving with the pine needles. So kind of exploring the initial steps of pine needle basketry. Pine needle basketry isn't necessarily just going out picking up pine needles and starting to weave a basket. There are some preparation steps to prepare the needles for your best results. Pine needles tend to have sap coated on them or stuck to them and so we want to wash them of dirt and sap before we use them, process them so that they are nice and clean and high quality as we're working with them to build a basket. If you're going to put time into something that's handmade, you probably want to use quality materials so that your end result is high quality as well. Before we dive into where to gather and how to gather your pine needles, I want to share a few different things here. I have a bin of pine needles that I've previously gathered. This is lined with newspaper in order to suck away any moisture and keeps my pine needles nice and uh, stored, but also have some airflow so that they don't mold or mildew. And I have a lid here that goes on top of this, and this is not airtight. You don't wanna keep it airtight just because if there's any added moisture or dampness, it they, they can start to mold and mildew. And after collecting and cleaning and taking care of your pine needles. You don't want that to happen. This is a collection of dried pine needles I collected this summer. They're fairly brittle because they dried in the sun. And then I have a few pieces that fell off of a pine tree and are still attached in their little bundles. These I picked up when they were still fresh and green and I've since dried them. And then this one, had faded in the sun. It was on the ground for a while before I picked it up and brought it inside to dry it. So these are examples of pieces that you might find out in the forest or in your backyard or in a park. And this is what they would look like on these bits fallen off of the tree. I also have a basket that I've collected. I happen to have a pine tree in my backyard on our property and so I have access to a lot of different pine needles and we're actually often raking them away and trying to find ways to use them because they're very abundant and they fall when they're dry and that's not necessarily the quality that you want for basket weaving. but we end up with a lot of them. So I collect baskets full and then go through them and choose ones like this where the pieces are nice and complete. They don't have any broken pieces on them and they're not covered in mildew spots. If you love information and you just wanna take in all the information about pine needle baskets that you can get your hands on, I suggest this book, Pine Needle Basketry from Forest Floor to Finish Project. And I'll put the uh, title and the link to this book in the description below, so check that for this resource. This is a great beginner's guide to basket weaving with pine needles. So if you want more information, check that out. And then I have a couple bundles here. These are dyed pine needles. And you can see I have some kind of maroon and some navy blue or purplish pine needles here. And then these ones are just a little bit orangey. Now I think it's time to dive into gathering and some techniques for gathering pine needles. So let's head out there. Let's go over a few gathering techniques. So when you're gathering pine needles, if you don't have a pine tree in your backyard, then you can either order pine needles online from pine needle basketry suppliers, and I'll put resources down below for that. Or you can go find pine trees in your local park or out in the forest and collect pine needles. I suggest collecting only things that are on the ground. Don't pull anything off of the tree itself. You want to protect the tree and allow it to continue to produce and grow in a healthy way. Also make sure that where you're collecting is not private property, it's not a national forest or park, um, and that you're allowed to <laughs> collect pine needles because you don't want to um, get in trouble for collecting pine needles. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. So make sure that you do your research and you are sure that where you're collecting from is an okay place to collect. If you are able to access pine needles in your area, then let's 
let's go over what you're going to find and how to process that. As you're looking around for pine needles, you may find bundles that look like this of branch that have fallen off their windfall. And so you can collect these, allow them to dry, and then take the pine needle sections off once the pine needles have completely dried. And th these you can usually find freshly fallen that are still green, and sometimes they've been fallen for a while, so they've dried in the sun or just dried over time, so they're more of a brown color. I find that the best time to harvest pine needles is any time other than the summer, just because the summer is hot and it tends to dry out the needles more quickly on the ground, and there's not as much wind, and so there's not as much windfall. In my area, in the fall, winter, and spring, there's much more wind. I'm much more light, light likely to find fallen sections or bits of pine needles and it's easier to pick them up off the ground. In the fall, there's a lot of dry needles that drop and my backyard ends up being coated with them. So that's a thing to consider as well in the fall collecting previously dried pine needles and processing those for basket weaving. If you want the green ones, then just kind of scoping out your area, finding the local pine trees that are okay to harvest from, of course, and keeping an eye on them through the seasons to see when they drop the most. I wanna show you several different bunches of pine needles to show you some different things that may happen on your pine needles, whether that's discoloration or mildew or um, discolored tips or uh, just some issues that arise in pine needles. Because it's a natural material, you are dealing with a lot of different variables. Variables, all the variables. Let's go over this guy first. This is one that I picked up, it's still fresh. And if I look at this length, these pine needles are actually in really good quality because the tips, only the very, very point is slightly discolored. They don't have any discoloration in the length and there's not a whole lot of breakage. So these would be really great for baskets because they have a nice length they're even color, so if we do any dyeing, the dye will apply evenly. There's no dry spots or discolored spots that would cause weakness and breakage. If you find something like this that's already dry outside, this one is also a high quality as far as sun-dried pine needles go. It's discolored or bleached by the sun, just it has a brown color rather than the green color. And yet the surface doesn't have a ton of discoloration. There's a little bit of markings on the ends, but the tips are intact and the color is fairly even. So you could use sun bleached pieces as well. I wanna show you this one next because this one has a good example of tips that have been burned in the sun. So these tips are brown and that usually indicates that there was a hot summer and the ends burned or something else happened that caused some of the pine needles to um, discolor or just look different. And that would cause weakness in the tips. So I may not use those in my basket weaving. If I'm dyeing pine needles, I wouldn't probably choose those because they'll end up two tone. This one, here's another example of one that just has a lot of burn marks in it or discoloration in the tips and a lot of breakage. So these are all a lot shorter in this area. And then there are some brown spots throughout the pine needles. If you go to pick up pine needles and you pick them up in pieces rather than by the bunch, then when you pick one up, look to see that it's all in one piece. They usually come in threes, three little sections, at least this ponderosa pine does. Uh, and you wanna run your hand along it and see that there isn't any break, breakage points so that none of the pieces are gonna crack off. And kind of look at it and see if there are any mildew spots. So There'll be darker and lighter spots on the surface of the pine needle. And the other thing to keep an eye out for is the length. You want pieces that are a little bit longer, so about five inches or longer. Pieces that are short or have broken off like this one, these lengths broke off. That one I'm not going to use because the ends would stick out in your basket and make your basket surface rough. Here's a piece that's a little bit shorter. 
still within my size range, but shorter than, than these guys here. So if you pick up pieces, you can pick them up and kind of give them a quick look before you put them in your gathering basket. This bin is literally just a pile that I raked up from my backyard and stuck in a bin to process later. So you can do that too if you have unlimited access to pine needles. But if you're harvesting outside, it's good to go through your needles as you harvest them so that you can leave behind those that you're not going to use. And that just helps maintain the environment of the tree and the pine needles decompose and create a mulch that really creates good nutrients for the tree and the area around it. So we wanna leave as much as we can take just the amount that we need. Once you've gathered your pine needles, you're going to want to lay them out to dry. So lay out cardboard or a piece of newspaper, something that's absorbent, and lay the pine needle bundles on top. I'm laying out my green pine needle bundles. If you have brown ones that dried outside, you still want to dry them on cardboard just to ensure that there aren't any raindrops or anything on them. And then um, lay them out and you want to allow space in between each bundle as much as possible so that they have nice airflow. And the reason you lay out the cardboard is to ensure that no sap that's on the center part of the pine needle gets on your work surface or where you're storing it. Once you have all of your pine needle bundles laid out, store them in a dark place so that they maintain the nice green color. The reason I dry my pine needles before using them in basket weaving is that they shrink slightly as they dry and I don't want that shrinkage to happen after I weave a basket because it will cause any stitching that I do to loosen up and the quality of the basket to diminish. I dry them like this in this bundle and then once they're dry you can go in and take off each little needle section that consists of two or three pine needles and use these in your pine needle basketry, either leaving on this little nubbin at the end or you can scrape that off with your fingers so that it looks like this. Once your needles are all dry, then you're going to have them collected. And I like to sort them out so that I'm cleaning pieces that I'll actually use in my baskets. So finding pieces that are full needles that don't have any breakage and don't have any discoloration or markings from mildew or mold or where they were sitting on the ground. So you can go through your collection and find segments that work well. Like this one here, this piece, is broken off and so the quality is just not as good so I'd set that aside. So I'll pull out and put together a bundle of multiple sections and you need about a handful like a uh, grip full of pine needles to do a small basket of pieces that you want to wash that you would use in your basket, then you're ready to start washing. And there's two processes for washing your pine needles. There's a simple process that you use for washing when you're preparing your pine needles to go straight into basket weaving. And then there's a process I like to use when I'm dyeing my pine needles with fabric dyes. And that is a little more complicated because I'm making sure that the surface of the pine needle is nice and prepared to take up as much pigment as possible. Sasha, don't be a pill. It's not hard. There's just a couple more steps to scour, which means totally clean the pine needles, and then mordant, which is preparing the pine needle to take on as much pigment as possible, and then the actual dyeing process. So don't let multiple steps deter you from trying to dye your own pine needles. It's a multi-step process and it does take some work, but it's definitely doable and something that's fun to try. And the color in your baskets is fun to incorporate as well. So it's absolutely worth it. To give you a reference of how many pine needles you'll probably need for a basket, this little guy took about this many pine needles and that's about a grip's worth for me. 
pine needle basketry, I'm still getting the hang of the amount, so I can't tell you exact amounts or weights because there are a lot of variables that will term determine the amount of pine needles that you need to create a basket, some of which include whether they are dry or not when you start, the length of the pine needle, whether they were dry when you harvested them or they were green, and how you did the drying process, how much shrinkage there was. Another factor is how thick your coil is. For this guy, I used a straw that was about a quarter inch in diameter. If you use something larger, you're gonna need more pine needles in the bundle. So there are a lot of factors that will impact how many pine needles you need to weave your basket, whatever basket design you have in mind, um, the size and shape and all of that. For now, I'm going to show you how to wash a bundle about this size. So. Uh, thumb and forefinger grip amount of pine needles. And these I've gone through and most of them aren't broken. There's one or two like these guys here that have broken off. Um, but most of these are full length and in good condition. And I'm going to wash them and clean them of all the sap and dirt so that they're ready to use. These I will be using plain in their natural color and these were dry when I harvested them. So the color, the green color has been bleached out of them by the sun. Now let's wash these guys. To wash your pine needles, you're gonna start out with a bin of hot tap water. And this is as hot as you can stand to put your hands in. It doesn't have to be boiling, but you do want it to be really hot. And then you can either use dishwashing soap, and I use Mrs. Myers, or soda ash to clean these. I'm going to use an eighth of a teaspoon of soda ash, sprinkle that over my water and then stir it around for a few seconds to get the soda ash to dissolve in this water. And then once it's dissolved, you can add the pine needles into the water. So you'll take your bundle, place them into the bin of water, spread them out, and then allow them to sink in. If you're using soda ash, you'll probably want to use gloves for this or a spoon as you're moving around the pine needles because you don't wanna get your hands in the soda ash water. Soda ash can dry out your skin. So I'll swish these around a bit so that they're floating around and kind of allow a little bit of rubbing together so that we kind of work off some of that excess dirt and now we're going to allow these to sit for 15 minutes to soak in the hot water and then we will do a second rinse. Our 15 minutes are up. You can see the water bath is pretty dirty. The water is still fairly hot. I'm going to dump this water bath outside, bring the pine needles back in and we'll do a rinse bath. When your pine needles have soaked for 15 minutes, be sure to empty your bin outside somewhere. Don't dump it down your kitchen sink or the bathroom sink because it may have sap in it and you don't want to dump that into your um, plumbing and have that clog your plumbing. So try to dump it outside in a garden, on a garden bed, something like that. Once you've dumped that initial batch, you can go ahead and rinse off your pine needles. For this second water bath, I'm just going to fill this up with hot tap water. And my goal now is to rinse out all of the soap suds and rinse out any last impurities or really sap and anything coating the pine needles. So fill this up just so that the pine needles are covered and then you're ready to allow this to sit. And we'll just let this sit for about five minutes before we dump this out as well. Now with these washed and rinsed, all the soda ash is rinsed off, you can take them, lay out a towel and roll, roll them up, they're still damp. I'm gonna roll them up in this towel and the towel is damp as well. And this will keep them damp and pliable so that you're ready to start weaving with them. So you can begin weaving with them at this point. And it's up to you whether you leave these little nubbins on at the tail or you remove these. You can peel them away with your fingernail so that it's nice and smooth and you get rid of all of that leftover dirt from that end and then you have a nice clean end to work with. Or you can leave them on, they add cool texture. 
there are pine needle baskets where these ends are kept on as part of the design and those look pretty cool too. So you can choose depending on what project you're doing whether to keep those on or not. If you're not going to get to weaving your basket today, take a Ziploc bag and store the pine needles gently in the Ziploc bag, zip it up tight so that you trap in that moisture and then stick this in your fridge until you can get to them. Try to get back to them within a week or so so that they don't start to dry out or become brittle. And the longer they stay in the bag, the drier they become and the more brittle they'll become. If you are starting to weave right away, you can just go ahead and go right into the weaving process with these damp. And that's how to clean your pine needles if you're using the natural color of the pine needle. Thanks so much for joining me in the studio today. I hope you enjoy pine needle preparation and I will see you next week for another pine needle video. Happy making.